has come all the way from Chatting, or that's a school, but Rumsbottom, Rumsbottom, <laughs> um, and we really we. We really wanted those of you who missed us last night to see this presentation, and we also wanted Dr. Comer to see the presentation. So, uh, thank you very much. Okay, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I did just run here about five minutes ago because Jeffrey sent me an email. I was just having some conflicts, so I quickly threw them down and I've run as quick as I can. So, I'm a bit out of breath, that's, because, that's why. So, um, this morning, I'm going to talk about our blackfish effect. And when I say our blackfish effect, I mean my own personal blackfish effect and the effect that it had on these guys as well. Always goes down well, cute little kids saying hi to everyone. So, um, <laughs> I didn't need to do it again. So, that's my town. I live in Ramsbottom. It's just, I just live five minutes walk just that way. That's our town centre. We have a steam train still. That's how we get around. Um, it's in the north of England, just north of Manchester. Um, so, I got here on Sunday. So, I'm still trying to work out the time difference. I'm still not quite with it just yet, but I'm getting there. And by the time I do, I'll probably be flying back. So, I, my school is Tottington Primary School, which is the next village over that way. So, that's the school I work at at the moment. My Blackfish Effect started around five years ago. It was a Saturday evening, and I was flicking through Netflix, um, and I came across a documentary called Blackfish. So I was on my own, a bit bored, so I thought I'd watch it. So I watched it, and after an hour and a half of watching the film, I cried, I smiled, I laughed, I went through all the emotions that you do when you watch that film. I put it back on again, and I watched it again. And then on the Sunday, I watched it again. So at the time, our topic in my class, my year six class, so they're 10 and 11 year olds, my topic was the, the ocean. So I thought, I'm going to use this film, and I'm going to use the topic of orcas, there's a bit of a writing stimulus and a reason for writing and just something to look at with the kids. I had no idea what would happen from, from watching this film. So the first day I got back to my class, I played this video. Now I'm not going to play it for very long because it's hard to watch, but you'll see why. there because it's a bit too early for that. So um, I asked the children in my class, if I could take you to SeaWorld the next day, how many of you guys would like to go? So as you can see just in the top corner, we had a vote, it was a 29 to 0 that they'd all like to go because for them, their experience of, of, sea, uh, of, of orcas is most of our country goes to Florida and when they go to Florida they do the Disney parks, Universal and they tend to go to SeaWorld as well. So that's their experience, that's all they knew and it's not their fault, that's just all they know at the time. So, I left it there. A couple of them you could see were a bit uncomfortable, had a bit of an uncomfortable feeling about what they'd watched, because some of them sort of knew something about the subject, but they didn't want to put their hand up in front of everyone else, because they thought they were going to get a free trip to Florida. So that's why most of them kept quiet. So the next day, I literally started off the lesson by saying, how do you think those huge animals got in the tank in the first place? And the classroom kind of went quiet, because they couldn't answer the question. So then I showed this next clip. It was a really exciting thing to do until everybody wanted to do it. What were they telling you you were going to do? Mm, capture orcas. <laughs> they had aircraft, they had spotters, they had speedboats, they had bombs they were throwing in the water. They were lighting their bombs with acetylene torches in their boats and throwing them as fast as they could to herd the whales into coves. But the orcas had been caught before. So I played that clip of the orcas being taken. Now, my children were 10 and 11 at the time, and they completely understood the fact that these orcas were being taken away from their family, from their parents, because they could relate to their own experience of how would they feel if they were taken from their family. So in that, in that short clip, they kind of understood straight away 
the, one of the key issues, one of the key problems of what happens at SeaWorld and why there shouldn't really be these tanks. So I got in contact with the WDC and we've got some literature, we've got some information using infograms which look just like that. Um, so the children can understand visually as well as the data interpretation so they could look at both sides. So um, when it was talking about the size of the tanks it shows pictures and the WC were great there and they also had help from both the Born Free Foundation as well as, well as um, a few other organisations. So then we decided, how could we raise awareness just in our class? We wasn't thinking of anywhere else, we were just thinking at our school initially. So we decided we'll write a poem, and we'll write a poem, a personification poem in effect. Um, and we just put these sentences down, a huge piece of paper down the classroom. I used to be then, they, now, and will I? And we've just written some ideas around those subjects. So I used to be, we looked at videos of in the wild, and swimming under the ocean and just splashing around and just how, how, how nice they how happy they looked and they seemed very graceful and slow when you see them in the wild which I did actually see them for the first time yesterday myself so that was amazing for me yeah. <laughs> and then they, how they were taken from the ocean how the freedom was stolen now how they must feel inside the tanks and will I as an orca think will ever be back in the ocean again so we put some, a piece of paper down the centre of the classroom I did this on a Wednesday afternoon, which was the third day, and we just written some ideas. That's a time lapse that we're doing all the way down the centre of the class, and they were full of ideas. It was one of those lessons as a teacher when you ask them to do something, and you have to literally almost tell them to stop because they're away with their ideas. So after we created the poem, we used bit, all their ideas and put it together, and we decided we'll just make a poem. We'll put a green screen. We'll put some images on the back, and we created a poem. And this is the poem we created. Not that one. There it is. This is, this is amazing and the purpose of it as well, it wasn't just a poem, it was a poem with a purpose. So I put it on our school YouTube channel and we started getting comments from around the world. We got comments from Anthony Horowitz, who's quite a famous author in England, and so is Brian Moses, who's a famous poet. Um, and Elizabeth Batt wrote a piece on us as well about our poem and how it moved her, which was really nice for me to see because it's just started to ping all around the world. Then the organisation Anti-Marine Land, because of the Marine Park in France, which is the nearest one to us, 
They asked could they translate it into French to be shown to French children. So obviously I said, of course you can do that. So within a, a week or so, we had a few hundred thousand views on our video um, in French. And there's a little clip, a uh, picture of it in French. And also the picture down at the bottom there, that's a Parisian school. So it started being shown throughout Parisian school. So something that we did in class back in, that school's in Bolton that originally I was in, started going around the world and was shown to children for them to understand how an orca must feel. And for me as a teacher to see the kid, our kids work, to go around and for a reason and then for other children to enjoy and see our work and then possibly them, them guys write something or do something about it for me. That's kind of what teaching is about for me. So from there, we, um, I decided to get in contact with Sam. Um, I sent her a, a tweet and said, we've done all this work. I sent her my poem, or the kid's poem, um, and I asked her, is there any chance we could talk to you? So um, surprisingly, she said yes pretty much straight away. So I told the kids this, and they didn't really believe me that it was going to speak to Sam because as a teacher, you kind of technically sometimes lie to them to sort of <laughs> persuade them things. So I'm pretty sure when I said, do you know that film we watched the other week? We're going to speak to one of the people from the film. They were like, oh, okay, Mr. Hunt, we believe you. Um, so even the morning of us planning to Skype, they were still a bit unsure, but I was really committed, so they started to believe me. So they created some questions. They were very knowledgeable. Now these 10 and 11 know more, know more than most adults in the UK and probably around the world as well really because they were very passionate because after I started the ball rolling they were collecting evidence and looking at things themselves. It wasn't up to me then, they were away with it. So we did speak to Sam and she spoke to us from Alaska. Alright, so, um, so you know me from the film then, you see me from the film, my name's Sam. And I started working for SeaWorld of Florida in, in January of 1990, so I was not quite 22 years old. And honestly, right now, you guys probably know more about killer whales in captivity than I did when I started working there. And I'm not even kidding about that, it's true. When I started working there, uh, I, I had just graduated from, with a degree in animal science from Cornell University. So, but Sam spent about half an hour talking to our children and I think she was quite surprised with the fact that the kids were coming up with really important questions and that knowledge she was, I don't know that she thought before she might have to change a little bit for children because my kids knew so much. She just went with it and she was fantastic. And from there I got in contact with the, well, the Born Free because I was working with them in the WDC. They told me about the, um, there was a bill trying to be pushed through in the European Parliament and they said, is there any chance you could come over? And I said, I'd love to, but financially, I can't afford to take me and some children over. So I found a loophole with the European Parliament. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret, and you can't tell them, because I kind of did a little sneaky thing that they're not sure whether they're sure about. So um, what I did, you're allowed to take certain amount of children from educational visits to European Parliament. And I coincided with the exact date that the bill was trying to be pushed through for my children to go through. And then we were able to take 10 children over to European Parliament. So we went over, and we actually went over, we took 10 children over. We went to, um, had, we had our tour around European Parliament, which lasted for half the morning. But then that evening, we went to, I'm just showing a clip of us going actually. So there's us, so I took 10 children over to European Parliament. We just had to randomly select 10, um, because we couldn't take them all over, I'd love to have done. So we've got a bus, plane, another bus, a train, we walked, and then we were there in the European Parliament. So, there we are, so that's us. We, while we were there, um, we had a tour round, but then we also went to the main chamber, and Naomi Rose and a few delegates were there, and they, were, um, they had a debate, and we watched Blackfish on the screen, and my children were all sat right at the front. Um, we handed our petition, because we created, we wanted to be part of the petition, so that our children collected thousands of signatures, and that's Sajid Karim at the top, um, he's an MEP for Conservative Government in the north of England, so we handed our petition, I did all the correct paperwork, filled in every single form, and there were lots of forms, but we did all the correct things. But the most interesting thing was these guys at the front, and it was full of people all the way back. Um, there was a debate at the front, and then at the end they invited questions. Now, um, one of my lads, Bradley, who sat in the corner, he kind of looked down at me, like this, all the way down, and he said, and he nodded at me as if to say, I'm going to do something, I'm going to press this button, because they realised if you press a button, your microphone comes on and you, you hold, the, the whole room this is your voice. So I was thinking, now Bradley, you can probably tell by his name, Bradley's one of those spiky kids that can sometimes go a bit off the rails. So I was just crossing my fingers, and he kind of, he even did this, he kind of did a big elaborate button press like this. And he went, beep. 
And then they kind of, all the people at the front sort of looked down at this boy in a, a school, a, a uniform, school uniform that he's just pressed the button and went, <coughs> Hello everyone, <laughs> like really loud. And he said, um, and what was really good, what he actually said, was he talked about the dorsal, dorsal fins, about how, he, give, he actually gave the percentage of the dorsal fins in the wild straight and the dorsal fins in captivity bent, and why is that a reason why you're not doing anything about it? And then the whole audience kind of looked as if to say, who's this kid? Um, but it was so powerful because they had all these scientists and people talking about it, but a little boy literally just schooled the whole entire room yeah. about these facts. And for me, I was like, get him. Okay. So, um, yeah, that was... And then after that, well, what happened next? Beep, 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 beep. All the buttons kind of went at the front of the door. Started coming. And then I just sat back and crossed my arms and thought, this is what it's about. Because not only were they asking... They were having an informed debate with scientists and delegates, but it was something they were really passionate about, and I, I, I didn't facilitate it at the start. It was all their own deep thoughts and feelings, it was all their own work, and they were almost confused what to do because they were just talking to these young children, and they were <laughs> confused about what to do. So we got back, and it was amazing, and we handed the petition, and I kind of, uh, the children left, and I've, not, I've seen them uh, ever so often, I see them around town because we're only small, we see them all the time. Um, and they say that's one of the most important things that they've ever done in their life and they're still very passionate about that. But um, a few months after we got back, um, I got a letter from SeaWorld um, <laughs> threatening me somewhat. <laughs> so um, I'll read it to you a little bit. It says, Dear Mrs Barnes, now Mrs Barnes is our head teacher or principal, like you guys say. Um, we are writing to bring to your attention the anti-zoo campaign currently being headed by your teacher at Devonshire Road Primary School, Mr Simon Hunt, which is me. <laughs> um, whilst we appreciate the subject of animals and zoological care is sometimes a subject of debate, I hope you agree the teachers have a duty, which I did by the way, to present all the facts to their children and give it equal. So they kind of did a spiel, they had four pages of their facts, so to speak. Um, so after I spoke to Bone Free and WDC and said, I see you like going after me, what's happening here? They said, no, they kind of do this so some people will stop doing what they're doing and they kind of send like a letter. So I thought, well, I'll use this. So I printed it off really, really large and uh, I pinned it on the wall in the classroom and all the kids sort of came through and they kind of walked past and they went, well, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's not correct. And it had the opposite effect to what they wanted it to have. So that week we brought our letters back to SeaWorld and counter-argued on every single point that they gave to us with 60 very, very, very angry children and we didn't hear from them since then. And then a year later there was an actual the petition that we were part of, uh, the notice to European um, countries. Um, it actually got passed, and my class and myself are named on that European, European Parliamentary Governmental Law. Um, it's there, and for me, that we actually helped change part of law in society and European government from something that we did in class. So there is a third thing. So this brings me to my lovely little darlings, my next class, which I'm currently teaching, which I spoke to them last night, this morning, to say what a great day I had yesterday, and I told them that I saw an orchid yesterday, and they were so excited, and I sent them a video, and they were really, really happy, so I've done something similar this year with my current class, with these guys, so this is class 348. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a bit of their work, but they'll introduce bits of it, rather than me introduce it all the way through. So this is Lily and Cameron you're going to hear from first. Hello everyone at TV Pod 6. My name is Lily Sue. And my name is Callum. In the next 10 minutes or so, you're going to hear from some of, from some of the work that we have been doing on our Olka topic. Although we are young children, much younger than Mr. Hun, although he's a big kid really, we know what we are talking about. So um, the first thing with this, we, I did something similar, but I won't go through it, but we did something similar. We looked at the facts, statistics, we looked at, I did the same thing where I showed a different clip. Um, but then I took it a bit further this time because I, I knew a bit more about the subject. So the documentary um, in England, Blue Planet 2, which is a fantastic documentary by David Attenborough, Sir David Attenborough in fact, I have to say that from England. Um, he We decided to narrate over some of the clips of the orcas and you'll hear from Max who he, always, he does a, an impression of David Attenborough as well. So um, you'll see that now. So this is some, some of the work that we did, and I think this is great. Put a 
Mongols have a secret weapon. <laughs> Now this was really important to me because um, we started the topic just before Christmas, around about November, December time. And after Christmas, I had um, there was a line, and we, we line up outside in very straight lines outside in school. And half of them had these little orca teddies, orca toys. And some parents said, you know, um, Max or Amelia, or whichever child, they came and asked for an orca for Christmas. What's going on, Mister? What are you doing in your lessons? <laughs> so. Nearly half of my children, for their Christmas present, asked to adopt an orca from Born Free, from the WZC, um, from different organisations, rather than asking for an Xbox or a PlayStation or these toys. So, for me to see that happen was just wonderful. <laughs> and we had loads of orcas, they all gave them individual names, but you'll hear from four children that adopted them. We wanted to help an orca captivity and give these intelligent creatures a safer future. We have learned so much about these beautiful animals and do every, every, everything we can to make them safe. So, um, so from there I then contacted Jeffrey and I sent him a tweet, I think it was, and said any chance we could speak to you because the work my kids have done is just amazing and they would love to speak to you and surprisingly he said yes and he spoke to me I think very, very late in the night, so it was early in the morning in England, in fact I think your wife nearly walked in in a towel, didn't she? She told me last night, I didn't know that until then, that could have been a different story. Um, but they didn't, fortunately, because um, biology was a few weeks later, so it was fine. So, um, he spoke to us, and he, what was really nice is that, again, he could see that our children were really passionate, but he was also very good at speaking to the children as well, and we had, um, as you can see there, that's a picture of us in front of the screen, but I invited parents this time, because I think some of the parents didn't believe what I was going to do, because some of them had seen the documentary, so they were all sat at the back, so we had a, class, a hall full of children, all these at the back, and Jeffrey sat on his lonesome with his wife wandering around in a towel somewhere. Um, but um, it was really, really good. And we got in, he told us about the Free Morgan campaign, and we wanted to get involved in something because, again, I wanted to just, I, they were so passionate about it. I didn't want to just cap it, I wanted them to do something about it, but I wanted them to do something about it for themselves, not because I just told them to. So I told them about the Free Morgan campaign using Ingrid Vess as a website, and we kind of did some work from there. This is the children talking about speaking to Jeffrey. And we made the newspaper as well in England, a few newspapers, which was really nice. Hi, my name is Lucy and my name is Sophia. We were so excited when we were going when we found out that we were going to Skype Dr. Ventry and interview him. We were so curious um, how we le why he left SeaWorld and he wanted to protect talkers instead. Um, and we wanted to say thank you and to spend his time to speak to us all the way from America. We wanted to say a big thank you to Dr. Ventry for going out of SeaWorld and coming to help the orcas from SeaWorld. And we want to show them how much we care about what he did to stop people from raising around awareness for the award. Thank you. Thank you, So those guys, uh, they're my current class in Tottington Primary School, so those, those guys are seven and eight. So all the bits of work that you've seen since I had the kids introduced, they're only seven and eight years old, some of them only just seven as well. So um, what I did with the Free Morgan campaign, we um, decided that we would... Is it the letter first? I'll just, one second. 
Ah, that's it. So um, we got we, we decided we looked at the website and said one way you can help is writing a letter to the Dutch government. So we did that. So we've written 30 letters to the Dutch government and this is Amelia and she's going to read her letter. Now, before she reads it, um, this is all her own work. I was just there, she collected the evidence herself and this is what she's written herself. And you can hear the passion and just the actual purpose that she's writing about is wonderful and you'll hear from her. Dear Martin Van Dam, I am writing to you in support of the Free Market campaign to be discussed on the 23rd of January 2018. I strongly feel that we are not only breaching the most basic animal rights by keeping Morgan in a small pool, but also believe that we are harming her in the process too. I feel that you should be very, very ashamed of yourself for not doing anything for poor Morgan. I am deeply downhearted. 92% of SeaWorld's orca did not survive past the age of 25. Morgan would rather beat herself than be bullied every day by the orca who don't speak her language. Children can understand why Morgan shouldn't be in captivity. Why can't adults? Please, please, please free Morgan and she's pregnant so she should be able to have her child in the wild and not only she'll be free but her child will too. Please. I believe that there is enough evidence to support the release of Morgan due to poor conditions she lived in. I hope you support the campaign and free Morgan and do everything you can to make sure she is released in the wild and able to rejoin her family. Thank you for reading my letter and I hope to have your support on this matter. Yours sincerely, Miss Amelia Watson. How good is that letter? I mean, when I, read, when I read that letter and all the other 29, I was literally, cr literally crying, like marking them. It was, it was, because obviously it's a big thing for me, but just see the children just articulate how they feel and um, down on a piece of paper, and then we sent that off to the government. Um, so we did, what we decided to do from there is, there's a wonderful short film called I Am Morgan Stolen Freeman. St <laughs> Stolen Freedom. I think that's a Morgan Freeman then. Stolen Freedom. <laughs> Stolen Freedom. And we decided to write some words to give the orca a voice throughout the, throughout the, um, the short clip. It's about four minutes long. And again, these are all seven and eight-year-olds that have written this completely themselves. All I did was just record it and put the picture behind. So you'll see that now. And you know, one of my kids will introduce it as well, first of all. But this is a poem we sent to Ingrid. And I think she put it on her um, page as well, which was really nice to see. But it's a tearjerker, this one. I'll warn you now. Hi, my name is Bria. We all just wanted to say a great big thank you for, for listening to us today. We want you all to know that we too will be the voices of the orcas. You are now going to watch our free Morgan poem that our class created. We worked really hard on it and we hope you enjoy it. swimming in the wide open ocean with my friends and family. I used to glide through the ocean and see the seagulls flying in the air. I could swim for miles and miles wherever I wanted to go. I used to be But then they came for me. I don't know why. I never hurt anyone. But I do know this is not right. This isn't where I belong. This isn't my home. Oh, what's that noise? I don't like it. to put 
the farm for food. If I don't, I get none. I have no choice. I know now, this is my prison. Will I ever see my family again? Will I ever feel the fresh sea breeze? I hope my mum hasn't forgotten me. I miss her so much. to Florida this summer and they've told their parents they're not going to see you well and they've told other children, another oh, children, another oh, children, another oh, children. It's kind of spreading like that ripple effect that we want that want to happen. So it's so important. But what's really nice that video we just create that to raise awareness for children to understand. It's work. Oh, so um, this is a school in, in Spain watching our video to help teach them about the issue and help them to try to understand it. It's very near Loray Parque, this school. So this is a short video of a school in Spain watching our video. This is a way of understanding. You can see the captivated by it. Can't take your eyes. So that's me. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. to teach. I'm pretty certain that some, or if not a lot of them, will be here in a few years' time, uh, passionately speaking about something that they believe in. And hopefully they mentioned Mr. Hunt's staff to this ball roll in for me. I'm old and grey, which is not a far away, really. Um, but yeah, it's really important for me as a teacher to give them a good education, teach them what they should do, but also give them the tools to look at both sides of an argument and then give them the, the tools to decide themselves. And that's kind of what what I like to do, but with these subjects, it's really easy which side you tend to follow. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening, and thanks, Jeffrey, for letting me have another chance to speak today without any technical difficulties this time. So, thank you very much. Enjoy your rest of the day.